Thank you for selecting Weather Shield Windows and Doors. This video will show you how to assemble and install a Weather Shield stacked frame multi slide patio door. This video is intended to be a supplement to the written instructions included with the door. Before you begin, make sure you have the proper tools and materials needed to perform the tasks. Doors can be extremely heavy. To avoid injury, use appropriate lifting techniques and an adequate number of people to carry and install the product. Mechanical lifting assistance may be needed for larger panels and glass. Ensure adequate room to assemble the complete door frame. Lay parts out on the ground exterior side down. Use cardboard or other padding to protect them from damage. The final assembled frame will need to be tipped up and placed in the opening. Orienting the door sill nearest the opening will allow for easy placement during this step. Starting with the assembly of the side jams to the head jam, slide the corner key into the aluminum cladding cavity on the head jam. Attach the head jam to the top of the side jam by lining up the holes in the head jam with the pegs on the top of the side jam. Add the corner key screw into the open holes on the cladding using the provided Torx bit driver. Tighten each screw evenly until the frame cladding comes together with a tight joint. Inject silicone into the open hole in the head jam cladding to seal the corner. Fill until silicone starts coming out the fill hole. Cover injection hole with the provided rubber hole plug. Slide the retainer clips into the grooves on the end cap posts, locking the head jam onto the side jam. Repeat these steps on the opposite side corner. Moving to the jam to sill assembly, add a quarter inch continuous bead of silicone to the end cap on the side jam. Slide the side jam and sill together so that the dovetail end caps interlock. Add a number 8 by 2.5 pan head screw through the side jam cladding into the sill nose screw boss. Add a number 8 by 1.5 inch pan head screw through the pre-drilled holes in the fiberglass jams. There should be one screw per track. With the frame fully assembled, it's time to move on to installing the frame into the prepared wall opening. WeatherShield recommends the use of sill pans for best possible performance. Due to the large size of these doors, it may be necessary to insert a temporary brace or story pole between the sill and head jam to help keep the frame from sagging as it's placed in the opening. Apply a continuous 3 8 inch bead of polyurethane sealant to the corner of the side and back dams of the sill pan. Add three rows of sealant to the full width of the door, leaving two inch gaps approximately every two feet. Apply a continuous 3 8 inch bead of sealant to the backside of the jam and head nailing fins. Keep sealant in line with the pre-punched nailing fin holes. Starting with the sill, place the door frame in the opening, making sure to firmly seat the sill in the sealant. Center the door in the opening and tilt the door into position. Do not slide the door into the opening for this will damage the sealant lines. With the door centered in the opening, place a screw in each of the corners to temporarily hold the door as you level the sill. Level the sill using a laser level. If necessary, add flat, non-compressible shims as needed to correct any issues. Once the sill is level, it can be secured to the floor. Pre-drill the sill through the interior channel into the subfloor using a 5 30 seconds bit. Remove any debris from around the hole. Inject the hole with silicone and apply the provided 3 16 inch by 2 and a half inch screws.
cover screw heads with additional silicone. Make sure the frame is square by taking diagonal measurements. Shim frame is needed until diagonal measurements are within 1 8 of an inch. Plumb each side jam using a long bubble level. Once jam is plumb, check that it is straight using a laser level and speed square. Screw through the pre-punched holes in the nailing fin using a number 8 by 2 inch flathead screws. Start at the bottom and work your way up, checking for plumb and straight as you go. Position screws 4 inches from each corner and every 4 to 8 inches on center. Level the head jam by using a laser and speed square. Once jam is square, screw through the pre-punched holes in the nailing fin using a number 8 by 2 inch flathead screws. Start in the center and work outward to the end. Jams are pre-drilled for fasteners. Secure jams and head through the pre-drilled holes using provided number 10 by 2.5 inch pan head screws. Shim at all hole locations to avoid bowing the frame. With the frame installed in the opening, it's now time to install the door panels. The panels are numbered in sequence that they should be installed. The first panel to be installed will be the stationary panel closest to the side jam of the track furthest to the exterior. Before installing this stationary panel, the mounting clip on the top edge of the panel will need to be rotated so that it hangs out over the edge of the panel. Attach the clip with a provided four number six by one and a half inch flathead screws. With the clip installed, the first panel is now ready to be installed. To install the panel, hold the panel at an angle toward the head track and insert the top of the panel into the outermost head track. Swing the bottom of the panel inward until it's parallel with the top and sits with the wheels on the corresponding sill. Gently lowering onto the roller track. Do not scrape the panel bottom over the sill. Roll the stationary panel to ensure the roller is sitting properly on the sill track. Slide the panel tightly against the side jam. Secure the panel into place by inserting the provided wood filler block between the clip and the head jam. Using a 1 8 inch drill bit, drill two pilot holes through the wood block and frame. Secure the panel in place by fastening the head clip through the wood block using two number 10 by two and a half inch pan head screws. With the stationary panel in place, you can now move on to installing the next interlocking panels. Prior to installing panels, insert the interlock blocks into the ends of the interlocks. The interlock blocks slide into the sill ends of the interlocks. Install the panel using the same method as the first. Repeat until all panels are installed. With all panels installed, final adjustments can be made to the rollers to allow for smooth operation and proper engagement of weather seals and lock points. Each panel is equipped with two sets of adjustable quad rollers. The rollers can be adjusted by inserting a 3 16 inch or 5 mm hex wrench into the access hole on the sill end of the panel. Rotate the adjustment screw clockwise to raise the panels and counterclockwise to lower the panel. For heavier panels, you may need to relieve the weight on the rollers to adjust. Place a block of wood on the sill and lift the end of the panel using a pry bar. To make sure the panels are adjusted evenly, slide the lead panel toward the locking jam until there's a slight gap. Check for an uneven gap between the panel and jam. If uneven, adjust panel rollers up or down until the gap becomes even. 
With the lead panel properly adjusted, move on to the second panel. Separate the panel so you can see daylight through the glass between the styles. Adjust the rollers on the second panel until the reveal is even. Repeat for additional panels. With all panels adjusted properly and operating correctly, move on to the finished parts installation. Install the interior and exterior adjustment hole end caps using the provided number 8 by 3 quarter inch flathead screws. Install the flush mounted pull handle per the instructions included with the handle packaging. If the panel does not lock properly, adjust lead panel for proper engagement. For doors that lock into the jam, the lock strike plate will need to have short screws replaced with longer ones for added security. Starting at the top, replace screws 2, 3, 5, and 6 with the provided number 8 by 2.5 inch flathead screws. Doors with more than two panels in one direction come with a collector plate that collects all the panels while opening. The application of this plate is optional. To install, locate the plates 3.5 inches down from the top of the panel using provided for number 8 by 1.25 inch flathead screws. Do not apply a plate to the lead panel. Next, install the exterior aluminum trim covers. Install side jam aluminum fillers into exterior frame. Check the lengths, if needed, trim to fit. To install, position the filler into the frame cavity starting at the outermost track. Rotate the cover into place and pound in, using a wooden block and hammer. Be careful not to dent the covers. Next, install head jam aluminum fillers into the exterior frame. Check the lengths, if needed, trim to fit. To install, position the filler into the frame cavity, lay a block of wood against the filler, and pound filler into place using a hammer. On the open ends, insert the provided foam blocks. The side jam with the stationary panel comes with wood fillers to conceal the pockets in the side jam. The wood fillers snap into vinyl clips already installed in the side jam. The interior portion of the sill has an open U-channel that is used to conceal the sill fasteners. Cover the channel with the provided aluminum sill riser. To install the riser, apply silicone to the inside and outside leg of the interior channel in the sill. Add a line of silicone where the riser will butt against the wood side jams on both sides. Snap the riser sill into the sill. With the door fully installed, the exterior can now be flashed properly. Cut two lengths of flashing tape equal to the rough opening jam height plus 5 inches. Remove the backing of the tape and apply over the nailing fin and the weather-resistant barrier keeping centered on the jam. Roll the tape smooth with a J-roller to eliminate bubbles and to promote adhesion. At the head, cut one piece of flashing tape equal to the width of the door opening plus 10 inches. Remove the backing and apply over the head nailing fin, extending past the jam flashing by at least one inch. Roll the tape smooth with a J-roller to eliminate bubbles and to promote adhesion. Moving to the interior, 
Insulate and seal the gap between the rough opening and the door frame using either loose fill fiberglass insulation or low expansion polyurethane foam. If using foam, make sure to use a brand that is recommended for doors and windows. The door installation is now complete and ready for final finishing and trim. For best results, we recommend sealing your wood products immediately upon receipt. Avoid storing products or leaving them unfinished for more than 30 days. Do not allow unfinished wood to be exposed to excessive moisture or high humidity. For more detailed instructions, please check the instructions that came with your door or contact your local WeatherShield representative.